Okay, we're going to begin our look at the button maker tool by making our own button. So I'm here in Adobe Photoshop. You could do this in any image editor that exports to transparent ping. So ping with alpha channel, ping 24. And um, I think probably Macromedia Fireworks, Corel Draw, Jask Paint Shop Pro all do that, but don't quote me on that. Okay, so I'm just going to we're just going to do this with shapes. You could actually add effects for these and everything. Get really fancy, but we just want to go through really quick and not obfuscate the issue. So I'm going to create a shape and I'm going to create four copies of that, well, three copies of that shape for a total of four. I'm going to go through and I'm going to rename them first. So disabled up highlight and down. And these are going to be the four states for our button to fill out the um, interactivity involved with the button object. So we're going to actually take the disabled state and fill it with a gray color. Okay, so there we go. Oops, actually, there we go. That's better. Okay, and then we're going to go to our up state. We're going to leave it alone. That's the color we wanted for it. For a highlight state, I'm actually going to lighten up this color a bit. So I'm just going to do this like that. And for the down state, I'll just darken the color a bit. So this is a very, very simple way of indicating that these states have been reached. So for example, here's our up state. And when our mouse goes over it, it'll actually lighten up like that. OK, so you could actually create shadow effects, glow effects, all sorts of stuff. You could even use your logos and your photographs for creating buttons but we're just going to do it this way for now. Okay, and we'll dis disable the background so that we're over a transparent background. And this is the most important thing. Whatever image editor you're using, you have to have that transparency there in order to get transparent buttons. If your buttons are rectangular, obviously that won't be a concern. So let's go ahead and crop to our button, and we'll just export these different layers as, uh, as ping... Oop, I've got to rename my down layer for some reason, as ping24. Uh, so we'll go to the Save for Web, that's File, Save for Web, and we'll choose ping24 as a format, make sure transparency is checked, and basically you'll have to learn how to do the equivalent of this if you're using some program other than Photoshop. Then we'll press Save, and we'll save to our desktop. So this is our disabled state. I'll go through and I'll click them on one at a time and save them. Okay, so that was pretty quick. And I can actually go ahead and close Photoshop now. We've got our buttons, uh, button states that is, and we'll go into Autoplay Media Studio and choose from the Tools menu, Button Maker. Okay, and I'm actually going to minimize this slightly. And you'll see that here, actually I'll blow it up first and we'll take a quick tour and then we'll, we'll do this. You'll see that there's different areas here. We've got a Properties pane over here to the right. We've got a preview pane down here on the bottom right. We've got an images pane here on the bottom left. And this is going to be our master images pool. And then we've got six panes to denote the different states of the button. We're going to go ahead and minimize this a bit and drag our button images into the images pool here. Okay? So just go ahead and drag them all down there. Now we'll go back to our button maker. I'll maximize it again. And you'll see that we've got our four images here. And we've got to create six states out of them. So what we'll do is the first one that we're going to drag in there is actually going to fill up all six by default. So we'll take the disabled one, which is uh, the one for the end two here, and I'll click on the file down here in the file pool and drag it here into one of these panes. Okay, and you can see it filled them all out. And we'll just repeat that process for the other images. So we'll drag the up image up here to the upper left. We'll drag the highlight image into the highlight pane here. We'll drag the down image into the two down image panes here. Now we can go over into our live preview area, and you'll see that our button is working perfectly already. When we mouse over, it gets lighter. When we click on it, it gets darker. The only thing I've noticed is that the caption is maybe one pixel or two pixels too far to the left. So we'll actually come into our Properties Inspector, and where it says Center X, I'm going to add a pixel onto that. And now it's perfect. Now you could actually s offset your, your caption by quite a bit here. So if you have a glow effect or a shadow effect that's one-sided, you'll find you may have to offset it by 10 or 20 pixels here. You can just do it by eye, clicking through. As well, you can set up your font here, your default text, 
in this properties area and you can put uh, some information for the button so maybe I'll go ahead and type in my name here and I'll type in a description so blue button and I will oops sorry I put my name in the name field so I'll put the name of the button there there we go and I'll type my name into this field uh, copyright I'll leave alone the URL I'm just gonna leave these for now but you could go actually through and <coughs> excuse me put in your website your email address etc the hit threshold is kind of interesting if you leave it on default here for these types of buttons you'll find that your mouse actually follows the contour of the button perfectly so rounded buttons are actually have a hit test that follows the image area not the not the overall area so up until now it was actually very hard in uh, using any tool really even including uh, various um, types of um, Dreamweaver and whatnot to make these type of buttons so this is very very handy it automatically happens when you have them set up like this now depending on what type of button you have you may have to adjust that threshold to get it to follow the contour of your button perfectly so I encourage you to experiment and if you have other questions about the button maker tool go ahead and click on this help icon of the question mark and you'll see there's a lot of stuff in here to get you going and you can also visit our forum and ask as well but I encourage you to go through and experiment with other stuff this is just a very simple demo anyways let's go ahead and save our button now that we've got it ready we're gonna leave the font colors the same but we could have went through here and actually changed them for the different states and so forth but I'm just gonna go ahead and save it like this and I'm gonna overwrite this one that I have on my desktop so we'll just save it to our desktop and we'll close down the button maker now <clears throat> now we can actually just drag our button it's ready to go and plunk it down into any project and it's ready to go we can quickly uh, grab it distribute it and align it with some other buttons and create a little I'll just shrink this down a bit actually for so it looks a little better create a button bar ready to go if we press F5 to preview you'll notice that the buttons are already functioning they've had sounds automatically attached to them by autoplay media studio and they're ready to go they look great all we would have to do in actuality is go through these and type in our our various pages for example um, let's see this would represent something fairly typical for a uh, say a corporate presentation or something like that and so forth so you can see that it's a very quick process now to just uh, quickly swap out the text on your buttons and you're ready to go so you can make your own buttons now using the button maker tool and additionally I wanted to show one more feature which is you can edit buttons with the button maker tool so if we have a button and I'm gonna drag one for a, from the gallery here say blue tab and put it down on the canvas we can actually right click on it and select button maker from the menu and it opens it automatically in our button maker note that these panes if you have a large button they'll shrink down the button over here but don't worry about that don't don't uh, um, look at these panes for the finished button look at this one down here the the live preview that'll show you the actual size of your button so I'm gonna close this down and I'm actually just as a final thing here I'll actually do that for one of our homemade buttons so if I click on the welcome button and select button maker so I'm right clicking and selecting button maker from the context menu it actually opens it up here as you can see it's actually editing the master button it's not editing that instance of the button the text has gone back to click here because the master button itself has that so we go ahead and close that down and now you know how to use the built-in tool the button maker from autoplay media studio 5.0 to build your own buttons now let's go ahead and take a look at button properties in the next lesson